This week's blog post is on the Worcester Art Museum. It's European Portraits, Part 3. For more on the Worcester Art Museum, see last week's post. This post will look at six French and English portraits of the 18th century, not room by room, but in chronological order. First up is this portrait on the left by Rigaud from 1708. Do you remember the Van der Voort portraits of sober Dutch burghers that we saw last week? This portrait was painted only a hundred years and 300 miles away, but what a difference. Rigaud, 1659 to 1743, was Louis XIV's favorite painter by 1688 and Louis XV's favorite painter as well. That's Louis XIV on the right side. When the French monarchy's wealth, power, and extravagance were all at their dizzying peaks, Rigaud executed hundreds of portraits of kings, nobles, and couriers emphasizing their rank and wealth as much as, or more than, their personality. Dayon V, the subject of this portrait, was a diplomat and a soldier, as well as a nobleman. Next up, a British work from 1744. British portraiture came into its own in the mid-18th century, when France was wallowing in debt and Britannia was beginning to rule the waves. William Hogarth, 1697 to 1764, was one of the most famous portraitists of the period. Here his subjects are Elizabeth and William James, wealthy British landowners. Hogarth is also famous for painting a series of satires of British society that were published far and wide in a series of engravings. One of the series was The Rake's Progress. This is British from around 1763 to 4. It's by Gainsborough. The sitters are simple, elegant, and much more relaxed than any of those that we've seen in earlier portraits. Thomas Gainsborough, 1727 to 1788, painted at least five double portraits of his daughters and several more individual ones. Often, as here, he shows how close the two were. Gainsborough was a favorite with British aristocrats and the fashionable set. Among portraitists of the time, his only rival was Sir Joshua Reynolds. Who's up next? Sir Joshua Reynolds' dates are 1723 to 1792. Incidentally, the Worcester Art Museum's curators over the last century or so have really done a marvelous job of acquiring representative works of major artists. Reynolds was first president of the Royal Academy when it was established in 1768, and as such, he had enormous influence on British painting. His sitter here is Isabella Carr, who became the second wife of the 15th Earl of Errol, a Scottish nobleman, a year after Reynolds painted this portrait. The Earl and Isabella were the parents of an even dozen children. This is 1768, British. Baron Craven, an avid fox hunter, is portrayed in hunting attire. Placing a seated figure in front of a landscape background was very popular among British portraitists, and through them became popular among American portraitists, as we'll see in a couple weeks. Francis Coates, 1726 to 1770, was the most fashionable London painter after Gainsborough and Reynolds. Next week, we will see a couple 19th century European portraits at the Worcester Art Museum, and then we will move on to American. For the Resurrecting Romanticism Conference in October 2023, I'm working on a talk on art at the 1893 Chicago World's Fair, also known as the Columbian Exposition. One of the questions I'll be addressing is why the organizers of the exposition and the painters whose works appeared there were so very keen to surpass the buildings and the exhibitions of the 1889 Paris World's Fair. As background, this series of posts is a quick overview of European portraits from the Renaissance to the 19th century, and then American portraits. And eventually I'll do a series of posts on other paintings at the Worcester Art Museum. If the history of Western painting interests you, check out my Innovators in Painting, a 140-page survey focusing on innovations that gave painters more power to make their viewers stop, look, and think about paintings. DianeDurantiWriter.com has hundreds of posts on sculpture, painting, architecture, and my other obsessions. To join the Sunday Recommendations email list, visit the URL that's on the screen or email me. And you can say, well done, Diane, or support my work and receive rewards by means of the tip draw on DianeDurantiWriter.com. As always, thank you for listening.